Hey, so now let's have a look on to the discussion for the next question. That's question number 21. This question also hold three marks. In the first part of the question, you need to draw a labeled ray diagram of an astronomical telescope in the near point adjustment position. And then we are given this numerical to solve that we will be reading later on. So first to draw the label diagram of an astronomical telescope, you need to see that you need to draw it for which position. So we need to draw it for near point adjustment position and in that case always do remember that the final image will be formed at the distance of distinct vision. So it will be formed at the least distance of distinct vision. So when you will draw it successfully this part of the question hold one mark. So you will be getting one complete mark only if you will be label this diagram like this is eyepiece, this is objective length, this is the tube length. Okay, So you need to tell them about each and everything of this diagram. Moving on to the discussion of this next part of the question which is numerical. This says a giant refracting telescope at an observatory has an objective length of focal length 15 meter and an eyepiece of focal length 1 centimeter. If this telescope is used to view the moon, find the diameter of the image of the moon formed by the objective lens. The diameter of the moon is given to us and the radius of the lunar orbit is also given to us. Now here we know the focal length of the objective lens that is given to us 15 meter and the focal length of the eyepiece is also given to us that is 1 centimeter. Now we know in this particular case what is going to happen the image formed by the objective lens will be lying in the focal plane and for that I can write that the diameter of moon divided by the radius of the lunar orbit that is given to us for moon will be equal to the diameter of the image that will be formed in the focal plane of the objective lens divided by the radius of the focal plane. Now when you will substitute the values what is going to be the radius of the focal plane that will be equal to the focal length of the objective lens and diameter of image this is what we are required to find out here in this question and we are given the diameter of moon as well as the radius of the lunar orbit. When you will substitute the values you can calculate the diameter of the image and that comes out to be 13.74 into 10 raise to the power minus 2 meter and that can be written as 13.74 centimeter. So this is the final answer. Now let me just show you the marking scheme for this particular question. So you will be getting one mark for drawing this complete labeled diagram of astronomical telescope. And then you will be getting two mark for this particular numerical in which you will be getting one mark for this formula and you will be getting one mark for this calculation and the final result. So this is how you will be getting three out of three for this particular question. I hope this question is also very clear to you. Let's move on to the discussion for the next question. Hey, so let's have our discussion for the next question. That's question number 22. This question is also for three marks and it has two parts A and B. One and half mark you will be getting for each part. Part A of the question says that if A and B represents the maximum and the minimum amplitude of an amplitude modulated wave, write the expression for the modulation index in terms of A and B. Let's have a look on to the solution for this part of the question. So, for that we are going to consider the amplitude modulated signal and let us suppose it is given by this expression. In this expression AM is the amplitude of the modulating wave, AC is the amplitude of the carrier wave, omega C is the frequency of the carrier wave and omega M is the frequency of the modulated wave. Now in the question you can clearly see this says A and B represents the maximum and minimum amplitudes of amplitude modulated wave. Now if you try to write down the maximum amplitude that will be AC plus AM. 
So, A is equal to AC plus AM and that is going to be my equation 1 and B which is the minimum amplitude will be AC minus AM that is going to be my equation 2. Now, if you rearrange these two equations, you can calculate AC and AM in terms of A and B. AC that is the amplitude of the carrier waves comes out to be A plus B by 2 and the amplitude of the modulating wave will come out to be A minus B by 2. Now, what is the modulation index? Modulation index is the ratio of the amplitude of the modulating wave to the amplitude of the carrier wave. So, this is the ratio of A m by A c and that will be equal to A minus B divided by A plus B. So, this is going to be our final result which we need to derive in this particular part of the question. So, let me just show you how much marks you will be getting for this part of the question. So, you will be getting one mark if you will successfully derive these results for AC and AM and then you will be getting the half mark for calculating this part of the question that is the modulation index. Okay, So, this is how you will be getting one and half mark for this part of the question. Let us have a look on to part B of the question which says a message signal of a frequency 20 kilohertz and peak voltage 10 volt is used to modulate a carrier wave of frequency 2 megahertz and peak voltage 15 volt. Calculate the modulation index. Why the modulation index is generally kept less than 1? Let us have a look onto the solution. So, here I have already told you that the modulation index is the ratio of the amplitude of the modulating wave to the amplitude of the carrier wave. So, this is given to us as a 10 volt that you can see it here. So, this is 10 volt and this is a 15 volt for the carrier wave. So, when you will take the ratio of these two, you are going to calculate the modulating index and that will come out to be 2 by 3. Now, what is the reason why it is always kept less than 1? For that, you need to write that mu is generally kept less than 1 to avoid distortion. When mu that is the modulation index will be greater than 1, over modulation occurs and the modulating signal being of greater amplitude, a part of its information is lost in the process of modulation. So, that over modulation does not occur. This is the reason why modulation index is always kept less than 1. So, for explaining this question, you are going to get 1 and half mark. 1 mark you will get for calculating the modulation index. Half mark you will get for this explanation. So, this is how you are going to score 3 out of 3 for this particular question. I hope the solution of this question is quite clear to you. Now, let us move on to our discussion for the next question.